Which of the following statements is true about the three situations below? All right, number one, so you probably identified that if they're a like charge, they're gonna repel. If they're opposite charge, they're gonna attract. But what about this one? This third one probably threw you off a little bit. So what goes on here is there's actually polarization that occurs, meaning that the negative portions of those ions move to the left side, the positive portions move to the right side, or if you are um, a nonpolar substance, but at least a conductor or a semiconductor, there's some movement of electrons allowed just a little bit. It does not take hardly any. So all insulators will have a small amount of movement of electrons, which will cause this to polarize, meaning I'll have electrons a little closer to the positive charge because they're attracted. The more positive chunks will be repelled, and so will be light, slightly more negative on the closer side. And because it's an R squared term for that force, they will actually be attracted. Don't believe me still, let's go ahead, go to the back of the room and we'll take a look and try this out. All right, here we are to demo that if I take a charged rod, and so in this case, cat for positive, rod is negative, as I, I bring it closer, you'll notice that it was attracted. Yes, showing that polarization, it attracted. And then it attracted to the other one, they touched, conduction, now they both have the same charge as the rod they touched. Correct, yes, they do attract, yes, because of that polarization. Number two, a plastic rod is rubbed with fur. What is the charge on the rod? All right, so when we have cat fur, it's not actually cat fur, but the reason we call it cat fur is because it reminds us that it's a cat ion, meaning it has that positive charge. So that means when we rub these two, conservation of charge means that electrons are not destroyed in this process. And so the overall charge stays the same, meaning if this becomes positive, then the rod becomes negative because there has been a movement of electrons from the cat fur to that rubber rod. Correct. D, it's negative because the electrons have moved from the fur to the rod. Next one. Three, a charged plastic rod touches a metal sphere on the electroscope with the foil and the foil leaves separate. The charge on the electroscope is? All right, so we're bringing the negative rod in and we're actually going to touch it. Now, when I touch, that's conduction, meaning they will have the same sign. So I have a negative rod, negative sphere. Those two leaves have negative charge as well. That's why they're separating like charges repel. And if I push more electrons down, you'll see them separate even more. Correct, negative because it was charged with conduction. They'll have the same charge. Four, a charged plastic rod is brought near a metal sphere on the electroscope. A person then touches the sphere for a short time and then removes the plastic rod. The foil leaves are observed to... All right, so this one describes that I bring the rod in close, I don't actually touch it, and then I touch it with my finger here, and then I remove my finger, and then remove the rod, and we see they are separated slightly. This is charging by induction, meaning it will have the opposite charge. How I know it has the opposite charge is if I bring that rod in, they go back closer together, meaning I push, it's positively charged down here, and so when I push the electrons down with the rod, it makes it more neutral there at the bottom. Okay? Yes, we see them separate because the electroscope was positively charged by induction. Next one. A cylindrical rod has a resistance R if we triple the length and the diameter, what is the new resistance? All right, number five, so it's a diameter wire, so I know my area is gonna be pi r squared. My resistance is resistivity times length divided by cross-sectional area, and they want us to both triple the length and the diameter. Tripling the diameter will also triple the radius. So here I have three divided by three squared, so that means it will be one-third the radius. Yes, R over three. A cylindrical metal rod of length L and diameter D is connected across the battery having no internal resistance. An ammeter, measuring current, in the circuit measures the current to be I. If we now double the diameter of the rod but change nothing else, the ammeter will read. All right, so we're looking to see how do I change the radius and how does that affect the current here in number six? So go ahead and double that radius, two squared. That means I'm gonna have one fourth the resistance. And if I have one fourth the resistance,
Dividing by one fourth is the same as multiplying by four, so I will have four times the amount of current going through there. Correct, four I, yes. In a circuit, resistor A has three times the resistance of resistor B, therefore, all right, so we see we have a series situation, so they have the same current. So one with three times the resistance, but the same current will result in three times the voltage drop across that 3R resistor. Correct, the potential across A is three times the potential across B, and they have the same current. Good. Eight, a resistor R is placed in series with a second resistor 2R across the battery. If heat is produced at a rate of 10 watts in resistor R, in 2R, it is produced at a rate of? All right, so we're looking at the power for a series circuit here in number eight. So same current, same current means same current in both ones, but I wanna look at the power. So I'm gonna use my power equation, which is IV, substitute in Ohm's law, so I know that the power is I squared times R. So they have the same current, so the one with twice the resistance will yield twice the power. So if this is 10 watts, this will be 20 watts. Yeah, so there we go, 20 watts, yes. Number nine, a resistor R is placed in parallel with a second resistor 2R across the battery. If heat is produced at a rate of 10 watts in R, in 2R, it is produced at a rate of? Pretty much the same as the last one, except for now we're in parallel. So what's gonna be common when parallel? Same voltage. So I'm gonna use my power equation, which is IV. They are gonna have the same voltage, so I'm gonna use Ohm's law here to substitute in for current, because the currents are gonna be different. So I can substitute that in, so V over R, V squared over R, and so the one with twice the resistance is going to have half the power. So if this one has 10 watts, this one is going to have five watts of power. Yes, half of that, five watts, good. Three identical light bulbs are connected in series in the following circuit after switch S is closed. What will be true about the brightness of these three bulbs? All right, we got our three identical light bulbs here. So they are in series, so they are gonna have the same current, meaning that the power is gonna be current squared times resistance. So since they all have the same resistance, the same current, they are all gonna have the same power as well. So same current, same resistance, same power, same brightness on all three bulbs. Yes, they will all have the same brightness. 